Hello everybody, hello hackers out there, boys and girls, welcome to this video in which we're going to tackle a challenge on RootMe. Um, it's located on CTF all the day. It's going to be a little bit different from the usual stuff I post online. This time it's going to be rooting a machine by exploiting a vulnerability in a binary. So essentially we're going to get a reverse shell based on a vulnerability, a buffer overflow um, vulnerability. And from there we're going to escalate our privileges to become root. Let's get started. I explain how to use uh, the platform um, in part of the course um, on academy.thehackerish.com from zero to signing your first ethical hacker job and um, the module one talks about how to build your uh, technical skills and here I talk about how to use RootMe as part of the different mm, learning platforms that you can benefit from. So check it out if you want to go from zero to actually signing your first contract as a junior penetration tester. All right, I'm going to choose a free room. Let's um, choose 24 and I'm going to deploy brain pain. Look for it and brain pain one and save. Then start the game. All right, um, it's going to take uh, some minutes to boot up. We have two hours to finish it. And the flag is located on slash passwd, which is owned by root. Okay, seems like our environment has been deployed. This is the host name, ctf24.readme.org. I'm going to copy this and, uh, well, the first thing we need to do is figure out what are the different services exposed by this box. To do that, I'm going to use nmap. I'm going to first target the top uh, 200 ports, let's say, and let's enable the verbose mode and target ctf.rootme.org. Hit enter and let's hope that the host is up, which it is. Okay, so we have three ports. Uh, for now, we're going to test each port at a time. Um, if we get stuck, then we can expand our ports to maybe uh, top um, 1000 ports or maybe all the TCP ports and probably also add some UDP scanning. But for now, um, let's just um, discover what's uh, behind each service. Um, so... Let's start with the first one, SSH, maybe use a root and then paste in our user, our host. So let's accept the fingerprint and it's accepting password. So we might try to brute force the password. All right. Um, I want to figure out what is the um, operating system of um, this machine, but I want to also um, fingerprint the services behind those ports. I mean, 22 is SSH, but the rest ports, uh, 9999 and 10,000, I don't know what they are. So it makes sense to target them and maybe run some service enumeration scripts with nmap to understand what's behind those services. So that's uh, for 10,000. Actually, there is, there is no port 100,000. It's outside the TCP range. Right, it seems that it's um, doing its job. It's advancing and we have some progress. Obviously, we have the open ports here, but <coughs> we Loaded 45 scripts and we are now doing some service enumeration with the dash SV option and then perform some kind of um, OS detection to figure out is it a Linux or a Windows or 
something else. Okay, uh, we have a bunch of random scripts, uh, strings here, and that's because it Nmap tried to interact with the service. We can see right here, welcome to brain pan and some bun a bunch of uh, white spaces and then we have enter. So this hints that it's a command prompt uh, service, I guess. Um, so we have here SSH running on a Debian Ubuntu, which means that it, this is uh, probably a Linux box. And we have a web server on port 10,000 um, hosted using Python, uh, using the simple HTTP server module. Uh, 9999, I'm not sure what it is, um, but we're going to figure this out soon. So let's try netcat. Um, so netcat-v for verbose, and uh, we want the host and then the port 9999 to see what this service is about. Okay, so we get uh, the same strings we saw before. Welcome to brain pain and enter the password. Okay. Hmm. Admin, access denied. Okay. I mean, we could for, we could for example, echo admin and then pipe it through to netcat to talk directly to the service and we get directly access denied. So, which means that we can probably automate the password brute force attack and try to figure out what is the password for this uh, service. Mm, okay, before going this route, I'm going to also figure out what's behind the web service. So, curl, um, HTTP, and then our host name, but this time we're going to choose the port 10,000. And let's see what we get. All right, we get a HTML page back with a image that points to a certain PNG file. Okay, nothing really important here. Can we brute force directories? I mean, why not? I do I have fuff install? No. Okay. Maybe wfuzz. Mm, yeah, it seems that it works. So I'm going to try wfuzz using a word list that is uh, used or found in the wfuzz word list directory. Um, I guess it's general and then uh, medium. And the URL would be HTTP and then CTF, hostname and 10,000. And then we're going to append fuzz to tell wfuzz, hey, use this placeholder to include whatever you have in the word list. Okay, let's hope it works. Oh, we have a lot of 404, so we need to filter them. I guess it's filter code 404. It's been a while since I've used wfuzz, but I guess um, it's the same as... Uh, mm, nope. Okay, uh, what is the... Uh, oh, it's hide code. It's dash dash hc equals and then 404. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems that it's working now. All right, so we get a hit on bin, which is responding with a 301, which means HTTP in HTTP protocol redirect or permanent redirect. We don't know uh, where it is redirecting, so we can figure this out using curl. So if we go to bin, you see the uh, location? So that's the uh, path where we have been redirected. So essentially it's just redirecting to slash, to bin with a trailing slash. Okay, uh, it seems that we have a different response now, which says here directory listing for bin. Okay, so this is a directory 
listing vulnerability and inside we have what seems to be an executable and it's conveniently called brain pain so maybe this is the same service hosted on port 9999 i don't know we need to make sure <clears throat> so i'm going to download this file and try to understand how it works so curl um, actually it's, it would be the same command as before um, brain pan dot exe and then we're going to put it in maybe temp directory um, and call it brain pain okay let's cd into temp and uh, issue the file command to see what this file is about so it's a ms windows uh, pe32 executable so if we run strings um, on this uh, executable to see what are the different strings and maybe grep on uh, enter because we know there is a enter the password a string if we if you remember from earlier so we have welcome to brain pen and enter the password uh, why not just use welcome to brain pen instead so we're going to use this and see if we find it. And yes, we find it. Um, so what do we have before and after that string? I'm going to use the dash C. And little you know, um, here is the same string that we had in the service hosted on 9999 TCP port. I also see... Um, kind of a string that pops up which says hmm, storm and uh, maybe that's the password I'm not sure anyways we're going to continue uh, maybe try with this password so that was netcat on port 9999 uh, let's type it just here. And storm. Okay. Oh, access granted. Okay. Um, let's try with uh, without the um, echo command. So this is the password. Access granted, and then we have nothing seems that the process just exits. Okay, what was the uh, value of the exit? Well, exit zero, which means uh, it worked as intended. So there is not much there, I guess. Um, maybe there is a buffer overflow vulnerability, I'm not sure, but to do this, we need to dig deeper into the, the binary and see how it works. So in the next video, we're going to do just that. We're going to set up a local lab so that we can uh, inspect and run the brain pain process or executable and find exactly where the buffer overflow is located and crash the system, crash the process using malicious input. Well, until next time, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.